So yeah. Uh, good to see you. I'm Raphael, work for Intel. Uh, I was not involved in this spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in, in, in a spectrum, meltdown, or whatever work, I'm, I, I'm not a security expert, I'm not involved in those things. I have, actually, I have learned about them when the, when the kernel patches went out. Uh, oh, I see, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. I There? Better? Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, so, okay, again. Uh, I work at Intel. I was not involved in this uh, Spectrum meltdown work and not in, uh, in any security things like that. Uh, actually, m my talk is totally uh, unrelated to, to what Thomas was talking about. Intel is not responsible for it. <laughs> so, okay, so um, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I work. Uh, some, one of my responsibilities is to maintain some kernel code. Uh, this is the infrastructure for power management and ACPI support. Uh, the, I, I work on the on the code in those areas too. I make changes. I you know look at patches and so on. Also, I sometimes modify things in the core kernel, in the driver core, and, and in places like that to help power management and so on. So this is going to be about one of the modifications of the kernel I did in that space. So uh, at kernel recipes, uh, 2016, Greg Crow Hartman was, uh, gave a talk about the driver model, right? This was. Uh, so he mentioned, the, uh, actually in that talk, he mentioned the work I'm going to talk about. So you sort of can consider this as, a, as an extension of the Greg's talk from 2016, you know, Greg, Greg's kernel recipe talk. All right, so it is all about dependencies between devices. So in a modern system, if you take a modern computer or a mobile phone or something like that, obviously devices are, are depend on one another in different ways. Uh, sometimes it is simple, sometimes it is more complicated. In, in simple cases, some of the, of the devices are parents of the other devices. Uh, like in this photo, you know, the, the white big swan is a parent and the Gray ones are children. They obviously depend on the on a big one. So this is a simple case. Uh, if if all of the dependencies between devices uh, in the system are of this kind, so parent-child, then uh, uh, the topology or, or, or a device hierarchy is actually a proper tree. In that case, it's, it all works. The driver model, as, as designed several years ago, is sufficient to cover that. Everything is you know, covered. Uh, you don't need to do anything. So one, one of the answers to, to the question <laughs> in, the, in the title of my talk is, if the topology, if the, if the device hierarchy in the system is a proper tree, you don't need to do anything. The driver core is going to cover all of that for you. But sometimes it is not the case. So, okay, so this diagram, this diagram illustrates uh, power management flows in the driver, in the kernel, basically device power management flows. Like what happens if there is, a, uh, if there is an operation like uh, a device suspend to be carried out? Device suspend, device resume, similar things. So it goes through a driver car. Uh, the driver car looks for, for a callback suitable for a given device. It, it, first, it first 
looks at the uh, code layer, which I will refer to as a middle layer, which consists of, of, uh, of entities like bus types, PM domains, classes, types. This is a middle layer. And if there is a callback here, the driver core will call this, will invoke this callback, and then the callback is, is responsible for the handling of this operation for the device. It may, uh, it may do something to the device by itself. It may call a driver callback to, to complete the handling. It may do those things in different orders. It, it all depends on the middle layer in this case. If there is no middle layer call, callback for the device, the driver core can, uh, uh, can go to, to the driver directly and invoke the, uh, a callback from the driver. Uh, and, uh, but this is, you know, doesn't matter. All of those callbacks make assumptions. They actually assume that all of the parents of the device have been dealt with, uh, and w which means that, for example, if, if this device is a, is, is a child of that one, uh, the, the, all the callbacks assume that all of the devices, all of the ancestor devices in this chain uh, have been already dealt with properly. So if this is a device suspend, all of them should be suspended already. And if, it, if this is a device resume, uh, they, they, uh, no, sorry, if this is a device suspend, I just get, get it the other way around. If this is device suspend, that this device needs to suspend first before all of those things. And if, if this is a resume, they all, uh, all should have been resumed uh, be before the, uh, uh, the, the last you know, dependent. Okay, now obviously this is the device hierarchy or, or the, an illustration of it. Uh, with the child, parent-child dependencies illustrated with th those lines with two, uh, two, arrows, or two arrows on both ends. Okay, so this is the parent of these two and so on. This is the parent of these two. Uh, right, now, so I what if there is a dependency between the purple devices in this graph? They are, th there is no parent-child relationship between them but what if there is a dependency such that this device have to be uh, resumed before that device and that device has to be suspended before this device? There is no way in which the original driver core ca ca can deal with this dependency. It doesn't even have a way to, to or didn't, I should say. <laughs> it didn't have a way to actually uh, make, make a record of, of that dependency. There was no way to do that. OK, another situation in which those dependencies kind of are show up, let's just say this way, is driver pro probing. OK, so uh, and that's the reason why we have a, a deferred probe error uh, code, because if you probe for drivers, for, for the devices as they show up, the devices may be discovered in, in different orders, not necessarily related to the ordering, uh, to the, say, call it suspend ordering or resume ordering. The order in which they are discovered may be different. For example, the platform firmware may, may, be, telling, may be telling about devices in, a, in some, some different order or something like that. So the kernel discovers devices in some random order, basically. Not, not, not totally random, but it is like uh, whatever, whatever is kind of showed to, to me first will be discovered first. It doesn't have to be like in a bus order or something like that. So yeah, this is complicated. And, and, this, and, and so, so we have this iterative process where the, we probe for a driver, then it looks, uh, checks if it can bind to the device, it looks for dependencies, resources that it will use, and it will find that, there, that some of them are missing, it returns EPROB defer, and uh, the driver core will try to probe for the same driver again and again and again, you know, until all of the dependencies are met. So this is kind of like this 
construction site, which is like super complicated. There are, there are lots of things here you have to... <laughs> so actually this one is... Uh, there are some historic buildings in this field. They need to move them around in order to you know, dig holes in the ground and so on. So this is complicated. See, actually in this photo they are kind of mm, setting up another crane to do something with the help of yet another crane, and it is like uh, the driver probing in, a, in Linux, sort of. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, so, so there are those cases in which, in which the uh, original design of the driver car is not adequate, because there are dependencies beyond the, the, the proper tree that have to be taken into account. Uh, and that's why we had uh, the idea of adding something to the driver car to cover those dependencies. But the idea was to use a, a something lightweight, like, you know, not necessarily changing the driver car in too much, but adding something on top of it that will allow us to deal with those additional relationships. So this is kind of like the solution they used here in this place. So this is in Poland, in Wrocław. So the problem was that there is a river through the city. There are two, p two parts of a, a university on different sides of the river. And what happens is that students often need to go from this place to that place, you know, and then <laughs> because there is the river in between them, uh, it gets hard because they need to find the, the, the closest bridge, which may be like uh, half a mile away, <laughs> and then go there and then cross the bridge and go back. Uh, so they started to think about, well, what can we do to address this? So they built this kind of lightweight uh, aerial tram system where you get, uh, get in a car like that, uh, six people can get into, into it, and it goes, you know, it hangs off a rope and it goes to the other, to the other uh, side of the river to the right place directly. And for this, they only needed to build like two towers and two terminal stations, and that's it. Uh, if they tried to build a proper bridge here, it could be like kind of more heavyweight, and and it would and it would, wouldn't go straight to the right place on both ends. Still, okay. So this is something lightweight that you can add it on top of the existing infrastructure. Uh, so first of all, there is a new uh, new uh, data structure in the driver car, uh, which is a struct device link, used to represent a relationship between devices. It is in in that structure one of the devices is uh, is regarded as a supplier, which means that it will uh, supply it will make some resources available or it will be needed to carry out certain operations on the other device. And the other device is a consumer, so it will use the resources, uh, resources made available by the supplier, or, or it will use the services of that supplier, supplier device and its driver. So here in this diagram, uh, and, okay, so the device link structure, th those device links are represented by those small uh, small squares with circles in them. Uh, and there is a list of, the, of the, there, there are two lists of device links for, for each device. There is a, li a list of device uh, links representing dependencies in which the device is a supplier. And there is a list of device links representing the relationships in which the device is the consumer. Okay, so in, so in this diagram, the lists uh, in which the device is a consumer are vertical, and the lists in which the device is a supplier are horizontal. So the green device has two lists uh, of two and, and two elements in each of them. It is a supplier for this device and for that device and it is a consumer uh, for these two devices. And each of those only has one, uh, one uh, you know, de de device that is, except for his, par for his parent, right? Only one extra device uh, that, that, 
that either depends on it or that uh, is dependent on the given one. So this device is a supplier for that one, and this device is a supplier for that one, and, and they are the, these are consumers of the green one. Okay, so with that, we know that, oh, this device, in addition to its parent, also depends on two other devices. And this device, in addition to its parent, also depends on the green device, which was the problem in the pre previous slide, if you recall. Okay. So what, what can we do with that? What, what can that be used for now? First of all, uh, system, it can be used to get the system suspend and resume and shutdown ordering right. Okay? There is a list, so, so for, uh, for all those things, so system shutdown and system-wide PM, which means suspend, resume, hibernation, whatever all of those things. Uh, there is a list of devices. As, as see, uh, one, you know, one link list of devices used in all of those operations. And it represents the order in which the, uh, the, the driver car code will visit all of the devices during the transition. It will walk the list in one direction during system suspend and, sh and shutdown, and it will walk the list in, a, in the other direction during system resume. During system resume, just resume. Okay. So there is a shutdown ordering or suspend ordering, or, and there is a resume ordering, which is a reverse of the previous one. So this lo looks like kind of like this, you know, chain of flights here. In the, 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 the those are multiple trains. But, but if you look at the, the, you know, the list of devices in the kernel, it, it's like chains of you know, pieces which goes throughout all of the device hierarchy. So that list has to be in the, in the right order for things to work. Because you know, if, we, uh, if we suspend a supplier uh, before a consumer, things get wrong. Uh, Obviously, if the devices are discovered in a different order, that needs to be fixed. So, so the information about the additional dependencies can be used to fix the order of the list. This is the first thing. Uh, second thing is that the, okay, so it is not sufficient to fix the order of the list to get everything right. Because during system suspend and resume, uh, the devices can be can be handled asynchronously. So they, you know, what happens is that uh, the driver car walks this list and visits all of the devices in all in each of those phases listed here. What they are doesn't matter. It's the only, what what matters today is that, that there are a few of them, and each of them uh, involves a single walk of the entire list. Okay, so the driver car walks the list and visits all of the devices and starts uh, an operation for each of them, but those operations can complete in a different order. Uh, in 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 a, in a different order, they they may complete. So so if you uh, started an operation for a device like in a, in front of the list, it may complete after after devices that were visited later. Because Say system suspend, okay? Suspend uh, operations take different amount of time depending on a device. One of them get more time to suspend, one of the, some of them uh, get less time to suspend, and so on. So in each phase, they are visited in the list order, and the operation is started in the list order, but the operation can end in a different order. But we need to be careful because, again, if the supplier is, is suspended, or, or even if the uh, suspend of a supplier is started before the suspend of a consumer ends, things may break. Okay, so we need to be careful to to ensure that before the operation for, say, in this phase, like before the operation for the given device is started, all of the all of the uh, children of it and all of the consumers of it have already suspended entirely, meaning that the, the operation for them has been completed. So the, again, this is the other 
thing that the additional data structure can be used for. We can ensure that, that all of the consumers have suspended before starting a suspend for a, for a uh, supplier. Or to put it differently, we, we can make all of the suppliers wait for all of the consumers in each phase. And here, this the same, this is a, uh, another flavor of suspend. Okay, so another use case is PM runtime. PM runtime, generally speaking, is the power management coordination framework. What it does is to coordinate power management across the device hierarchy and uh, across the, uh, the la code layers that, that I, I was showing before. Okay? So it basically what it does is it defines meta states for each device uh, support, uh, supporting it. It is optional, it does have to be supported, but every device supporting it there are two, sta uh, two meta states, suspended and active. Active means the device can, can be accessed, can carry out um, operations, can transfer data, so on. Suspended means the device may be inaccessible. Doesn't have to be accessible, be careful, don't access it. Okay? There are operations mm, leading from one state to another, this sort of a very simple state machine. Suspend goes from active to suspended, resume the other way around. There are transient states, suspending and resuming, uh, which, which only take, are, um, the devices are in those states only during those operations, respectively. Okay, there is another thing that can, be, can happen, uh, which means that if the device is active and somebody thinks that it may be not in use, so idle, they may trigger a check, if that really is the case, and if so, the, the mm, PM runtime firm framework will trigger specific handling for it. Okay, so device links can also be used for the, for, for the handling for addressing the, uh, the, the PM runtime ordering. It is not always necessary because there is some drivers actually track uh, the PM runtime ordering of all the other devices they depend on. But in some cases it is not done. And then the device links can be used for that. So there are flags that indicate whether or not a device link should be used for the tracking, for, for the coordination of PM runtime as well. The, that flag is called PM runtime. Why not? And, and if the device is active. Uh, at the time uh, of the creation of the link, uh, this flag should be used also in addition to that. Okay, so this is the third use case. And those are the only use cases I had in mind when I was working on this code, which was in 2016. But, uh, so the first version of device links went in uh, into 4.10. But then it turned out that some pieces of that code were not working you know, correctly enough, so we had to re rework it and so on. And uh, the, the last version is actually uh, it was merged last week by Linux. So it will show up in 5.4 if all goes well. Okay, now if the now, if the uh, if if we add the, those uh, links as shown in the in one of the previous slides, then there are those dependencies which are now represented by device links, and now it is clear that all of the, all of this part of the device hierarchy has to be suspended before we can suspend this device. And also, if we want to resume this device, it is necessary to resume all of, all of this, this part of device hierarchy. Well, because obviously, all of the, 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 this is a parent of these two devices, so they need to be, uh, it, it, it has to wait for, for those two to be suspended and so on and so on. But also, there are those links. So this device is the, 
uh, is the supplier for this, and this device is the supplier for this, so this has to be suspended after, uh, sorry, d d before the tool. And also this device is a supplier for this one, so uh, this has to be suspended after that one, right? And, and, and analogously for the resume. Okay, so if we have that information and, uh, and it is taken care, uh, taken into account by the driver car and by, by the PM runtime frame framework, then all of, this, uh, all of those uh, dependencies are taken into account. Right. Uh, so, as I said, the code is in, it will show up in the, in the last version in 5.4, 4, sorry. Uh, there are two types of device links. Uh, one type is managed device links, and the other one is uh, stateless device links. So, managed device links basically uh, try to also address the uh, probe ordering. Uh, problem I was talking about. They don't address it entirely, but because you know you need to know that there is the, the, the link needs to be present for the driver card to take it into account, right? Be so before it is added, we still don't know. But sometimes, uh, like when you walk a device tree, for example, or retrieve the information from the ACPI tables, you can figure out that, oh, there is a, there is a dependency be between these two devices, which are not a parent and child. Uh, so why not to add a device link between them? If the link is there, the driver car can, can take it into account. And how it is taken into account is that uh, if there is a link, uh, the driver car will not allow uh, the consumer driver to be proud before the supplier driver. And also, if, if the supplier goes away, the driver car will automatically cause the, uh, the consumer to go, the, to go away. I mean, the driver to go away. There are uh, flags to, to, to tell the, the, the uh, driver car what, what to do. Uh, when the consumer goes away, or when the, when the consumer driver, I should say, when the consumer driver goes away, or when the uh, supplier driver go, goes away. So if this flag is used, and a consumer driver un uh, unbinds uh, from the device, uh, the driver car will automatically remove the link object as, uh, along with it. If this flag is set, and the supplier driver uh, unbinds from the supplier device, again, the driver car will remove the, uh, the device link along with the driver. Obviously, they cannot be set at the same time. Okay, if none of them is set, the link is regarded as persistent, which means that it will be there forever until one of the devices is removed, either a supplier, the supplier, or the consumer. If the link is persistent, it can be, uh, uh, th there can be an auto probe flag set for it, and that flag causes the driver car to look for a, for a driver, for the consumer device, as soon as the, as the supplier uh, driver is present. So the supplier binds, and the driver car will look for the consumer driver automatically. Yep. When I see uh, when I see all of this, I think it might be a clean way to get rid of a lot of the ugly e probe defer stuff we have in the tree because like in some cases we do know the relationships ahead of time like uh, a particular networking driver would need a Phi driver to be done first, and this maybe subs this infrastructure could help us right <laughs> agree totally agree <laughs> so well okay the, uh, the binding between the phi driver and uh, the mac is actually described in device tree i believe yeah, so uh, you could yeah you could you could retrieve the information from that so that 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 is the, so let let me let me get to the uh, to the end of the slide deck and then we'll talk about this because you know okay. the, there is some work going on <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh next um, 
Okay, the, so the managed the, the the device links are those that the driver car uh, takes into account when uh, managing dri drivers, driver probing, and so on. There is another category or, or type called stateless device links. These are only for uh, the basically only for yeah. You can use them for power management, but, uh, runtime PM runtime. If you add the PM runtime flag uh, tool. But they basically don't require the, the uh, supplier driver to be uh, to be present for the consumer to probe, and they uh, they they don't uh, don't cause the driver car to remove the, the consumer driver before removing the supplier. And so this is like a, the link that is present will be followed in some cases. Doesn't cause the driver car to uh, to manage drivers. Okay. Could you give an example of when that would be used? Uh, again? Could you give an example of when that flag would be used, the stateless flag? Uh, so the stateless is, for example, in the, in the IOMMU subsystem. Because they, uh, it is like, uh, the IOMMU shows up, may show up after the driver has, the dependent driver has probed. In some cases, at least that's what I was told, <laughs> and that's why, and that's why, and that's why the the flag is there. Basically, they they need to be able to probe for a for a driver, and it may optionally use an IOMMU. Okay, so it's sort of like for. Uh, soft dependencies. Yeah, it's well. sort of like so. If the if they decide to use IOMMU, it becomes a hard dependency. Yeah. But if they don't, they it's not like the IOMMU may not be present in, on the platform. This is my I think my take <laughs> on this. Okay, so how to add a device link? There, there is a function for it called device link add. Uh, it takes two devices as, a, as arguments of pointers to device objects as an argument, as arguments. Actually, the, uh, the rules are very kind of not very hard because the supply, the consumer device object may not even be registered. It is just an object. The supplier device has to be registered, but that's it. Uh, the flags are those flags that I, I was showing. Uh, you have to pass them to uh, if you want to do a specific things. Thing like, for example, uh, drop the device link automatically when the consumer driver goes away. So use a proper flag for that. There are combinations of flags that are not valid. You have to be careful if you pass an invalid combination of flags, it will return null. If there is a circular dependency in a device hierarchy, it will try to detect it and also will return null. Because if there is a circular dependency, it means that the system is, is something is wrong because you have to be able to, uh, to uh, discover all of the devices in a proper order. At least there is at least one ordering in which you can suspend all of the devices safely. If there, uh, if there isn't, then the system is not realistic, <laughs> basically speaking, right? So it tries to, to tries to detect those cases. Also, if there is not enough memory to create a device link object, it will uh, it will um, it will return null too. But that's that's trivial. Uh, okay, so you just call it. If you use a, a managed device link, so you don't pass the stateless flag. That's all all you need. Just use device link add and be done. The driver car takes care of everything else. Uh, if you do pass the stateless flag, you need to drop the, the, the reference you have taken on the device link. Because that what happens is that the device link may, may be present already when you call device link add. And that's interesting. Because the link, the, the already present link, may be of a different type. 
you never know. Like the previous user could could may might want to might want a stateless link. You are adding a managed link, or the other way around. So in fact, what happens is that the link may be created if you are the first user of it. But if you aren't aren't the first user of it, uh, the, a reference is taken on it. Uh, interestingly enough, the driver car should be able to combine all of the flags in a compatible way. So, <laughs> so if one, of the one user requests a, a stateless link and the other wants to use a managed link, the driver car should be able to, to take care of it. The only requirement is for, for whoever uses the stateless flag uh, to drop the reference he, taken, he has taken on the device, uh, either this way or that way. The only difference is that you can, if you, you know, happen to, to be storing the link pointer somewhere for some reason, you can use this variant. If you just have consumer and supplier pointers, the, uh, you, you can use this. I'm not sure why Void is here, to be honest. Somebody else added the, the, that function. I was, I was reviewing this patch. I didn't, I didn't notice the Void. It is like, it is there, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I need to fix it. OK, so uh, OK, Mike? Oops. Just a quick question for clarification. Is this supposed to be used in drivers? Yes. So drivers are supposed to build all these links? Uh, yes, drivers can do that. It is not like the, they, they are the only entity that can do that, but drivers can do that. Okay, so gotcha. you can Thanks. call device link add in, in a probe routine. For example, it should be safe to do that. I didn't say that, sorry. It should be safe to call device link add in probe of a consumer driver, <laughs> at least. OK, now, now you said it, so it's perfect. Thanks. Uh, it, it kind of doesn't make sense to do it in the supplier to probe, but you al it also should be safe, you know, as long as you know that the consumer device uh, address, right? Okay. I have a question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a question. Uh, just a quick question. If I know of a uh, dependency, I know my device depends on another device. How, how, uh, um, how are you supposed to get a reference on the device you depend on? To add a device link. Uh, if you know a dependency, you are expected to know the uh, the. Mm, uh, who, who you depend on, right? Oh. This way or another. How do you get a reference from inside your driver? How do you, how do you get the uh, So if you, don't have a, if you don't have a pointer to the other device, then somebody else has to do it for you. Because okay. you, d you, you want, th this is, you know, this is a limitation that if you, if you don't have a pointer to the other device, you don't, yeah, you can't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do much about it. Somebody has to do, okay. do it for you. So either whoever uh, whoever uh, is walking the device tree or whoever is walking the ACPI tables should be should do that. Okay. So so could it be that it's like a device tree p handle and you kind of resolve it and then you get the uh, the the device pointer you out could, of the p handle? Do that. You could do it this way. Yes. Okay. So that's that's one of the example of how this could work, right? Right. Okay. You, you can also use, uh, you get a, a CPI companion and this, this works the same way, I guess. Yeah, so just basically my question was right the same which was ans asked before. So if it is supposed to be used from the probe, then uh, of course we know one device, either a consumer or supplier, whatever, in the, in the dev device driver. But how can we get the second device? So in some uh, trivial, in some trivial cases, when we have, let's say, an MFD, we can probably guess the second yeah. device. But in general, I think this interface looks like not so applicable to be added in inside the device drivers. Actually, there are drivers that use it, so you are probably wrong. <laughs> So how how how, <laughs> so how to how to get the how they structure? how do they get to the uh, device they use things. they can use things like we were talking about uh, either a, a p handle from the device tree or a, and you can get get back from the p handle to extract device 
or you can use uh, an ICPI companion and get back from that to the to, to a struct device. Or you can also, uh, in some cases, uh, I, uh, th th there is a software node thing that you also can use. That, uh, so you have a pointer to um, uh, uh, some something called firmware node, F FW node, that you can use to get back to the to a struct device also. So there are ways. But generally speaking, if you uh, <coughs> If, if, if you know that there is a dependency, but you don't know wha ex what device exactly you depend on, there, there should be a layer of code which, uh, which can figure out. Because I, uh, somebody else should be able to do that, because they want the data structure that the dependency is encoded into, or something like that. So that code layer should create device links for you, if, if it finds that, oh, there is something between, between those two devices. Uh, okay. Uh, probe. Oh yeah, what, it, what, what also it does, I, I didn't mention that, if you call this, it will reorder the, the, the suspend list of, of devices, suspend resume list. And the, or the reordering goes to is recursive. So it will reorder the Supplier after uh, yeah depending on the order in which you in which you walk but if you order you reorder the uh, supplier after the consumer and all of the children accordingly right so the uh, consumer after the supplier okay and the children and the consumers of the consumer after so. As soon as you add the device link, the, all of the, the, the suspend resume list of devices is going to be in the right order. So uh, this is what you, what, what you might want to use stateless for, just to reorder the suspend resume list. And then it will also cause the, uh, the um, uh, suppliers to wait for devices during system-wide suspend. And consumers to wait for suppliers during system-wide resume. Okay, so removal. Uh, some of the internals. There is a the state machine used for, uh, for the management of uh, the links if they are managed. Uh, there are states like this, so the link is dormant if, they, if no, none of the supplier consumer drivers are present. If the supplier becomes uh, binds to the device, the link becomes available to the consumer. Then the consumer can probe. Uh, it, once it has probed, the link is active, meaning all, both the drivers are present and working. Then the consumer may uh, unbind, and it, it goes back to the available state. Uh, and then when the supplier unbinds, it goes to, to the supplier unbind state, which is special uh, for, for uh, and it's only needed for the coordination and it goes back to dormant from this one. It cannot. Uh, because if you are, the, if the link is managed, as I said before, the unbinding of the supplier causes the consumers to go away, to be unbound. So, so this happens, consumer unbinding happens. Okay, so, and there are rules. There are rules, I won't go into details about those. There are rules in which uh, what happens about, basically about what happens if the link is already present and you create a link with a different set of flags. So they have to be combined together so, so you can, uh, so both of, the, both of the users can be satisfied, right, with the outcome. Okay, so that, that's basically the end of, uh, of what I had to say today. Again, uh, the, the state I was talking about is 5.4 RC1, which is going to be released next, on Sunday, this Sunday, right? I think so. Uh, all right, so this is 5.4 RC1 state uh, that, uh, behavior in the previous versions of the kernel may be different from this. So, yeah. Okay, so now, 
there is work in progress. Based on that, I know of several subsystems that already use it for various reasons, like the, uh, the IOMMU subsystem I was talking about. There are drivers which know the dependencies and know the, the, the pointers of consumers or suppliers, and they already use device links. There is a work in progress on making the driver core uh, use device links to solve the, the, the probe dependency that you were talking about. There is a patch set out there that's going to be discussed next week. Uh, uh, in, uh, no, not next week. The in, the in the uh, Open Source Summit Euro Europe in, uh, by the end of October. It is sort of controversial because of the re reasons why it, what it does to device trees. But that's, <laughs> that's the, uh, generally speaking, this is kind of, <laughs> it, it hasn't been very like, uh, used very uh, widely in the kernel because I it was like added uh, on a request from somebody. Somebody said, oh, I, it would be good to have something like that. So we kind of looked at things and said, oh, yeah, here, try it. So they tried it and, you know, worked for them. Uh, it should now work, be ready to use for very complicated use cases like this uh, consumer auto probe thing that it's really, you know, <laughs> the DRM people actually ask the question, oh, you know, I have this use case where I, d I, un uh, for I, I do uh, like testing by unbinding the, uh, the supplier and then I want to bind it again and I want the consumers to show up automatically. And I said, well, <laughs> <laughs> can be done, maybe. <laughs> so, so that's why this extra flag is there. So, uh, it, as I said, should be ready to use in 5.4. Use it. You know, whatever you think it is suitable for, use it. Let me know if it doesn't work. We'll, uh, we'll make it work for you. Promise. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, how it was useful. <laughs> yeah, more questions if there are any. Yeah, sorry about that. There were questions in the during the talk. Okay. So just for clarification, assuming that, uh, let's say, my Ethernet Mac depends on uh, power supply from a regulator, will the uh, regulator framework create this device link, or is it going to be the driver core that's going to create the device link? Who's going to do that? And who knows that there is a dependency? Uh, let's say it's described in device tree via phandle. So I would expect the code that walks the device tree to create the link for you. Uh, the device tree code. The, okay. the code that creates the, the, the consumer device. Okay. Because it knows that, oh, I'm creating this device and it will depend on the other one. I presumably have already created. Okay. And here, here is another question, because there are usually these kind of uh, slightly defective hardware designs where, for example, two files are supplied from a single regulator. Can this somehow solve the problem that you need to power cycle them in some sort of sane way? No, it, because, no, it doesn't. Because there are drivers which like power cycle those files, and no, if you have them connected to the same regulator, you have a problem? As you can say from my talk, or, or see from my talk, it only addresses the ordering problem. Okay. It doesn't, uh, doesn't address the problem in which you have to, say, handle two devices at the same time, mm -hmm. or something like that. I, I'm not sure if you can entirely represent the one, one of these problems as the other one. Okay, gotcha. Any more questions? Comments? No, thank you. <laughs>